Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. August de Oliveira, and I'm selling another one of my printers. So um, I know I have a problem with printers. Um, I've got um, three printers from a company called Frozen. Uh, kind of weird name, uh, P-H-R-O-Z-E-N. And in my opinion, in the LCD printer realm, they're the best printers out there. Um, you know, they the price ranges are a little bit different. The one that I'm selling to my buddy, um, Edgar Munoz, um, is called the Frozen Make. And the Frozen Make was one of the first um, consumer grade printers made by Frozen. They made um, some really expensive DLP ones before. Um, the other two that I have are the Frozen Shuffle and the Frozen Shuffle XL. Um, so since I have three, I decided to sell one of them. This one is called the Frozen Make. And I'm just gonna turn the camera over to the Frozen Make. Um, so I'm gonna go over uh, sort of the nuts and bolts uh, behind the Frozen Make um, and let Edgar and everyone else know how these printers work. Now, all three models really follow the same sort of way of printing. And everyone asks me, you know, should I get a cheap LCD, LCD printer for dentistry as my first printer? Um, I would kind of say no. And the reason why is, um, these aren't exactly plug and play. Um, if you have a printer like the Form 2 and a printer like the Moonray, the software, the wireless, everything works really well together. Now, Frozen is a very robust printer. I hardly have any failures on it. Um, there is the AnyCubic Photon, which is a popular printer right now in dentistry. I just can't get that thing to work consistently. I know if I send a printer to this one, or a, a print to this one, uh, I'm gonna get a model in the end. So I just kinda wanted to go over some printer anatomy with you, Edgar, um, uh, before you get started. So first thing I wanna grab is something called the build plate. And if you look here, this is the build plate. And one thing, I'm just gonna turn the camera to the printer itself. What you'll notice about frozen printers is they are really, really strong. Like this is all metal. They have a little camera so you can watch where things are. Um, one problem with um, printers is something called Z-Wobble, and you can see how well everything is just sort of put together here. And if I put the build plate on, you can see that it just slides in, you know, really one way and really, really kind of tight. Um, Edgar, the next thing I wanna show you is something called the resin vat. Um, the resin vat uses something called FEP. And FEP stands, I don't know, it's fluoro something or whatever. Um, it's clear Teflon tape and it prevents your layers from sticking to the bottom of the resin vat. Now, if this gets scratched or breaks or you get failed prints, um, if you go to a site called fepshop.com, F-E-P uh, shop.com, um, you can get another one of these and you just bolt it in and trim off the excess. So let me show you how all the pieces fit together here. So the build plate, or the, I'm sorry, the resin vat just sort of slides in. And there's these two bolts and the bolts screw down. Now, one thing the Frozen does have, which is pretty nice, is a UV cover that has a hinge. Um, they sent me a new one because my old one broke, and they sent me the hardware, but they forgot to send me the bolts. So I'm gonna send you the hardware. Just go to Home Depot and get the bolts that fit it, and this will hinge. But for now, I just put it over the top, sort of like how the Moonray works. So Edgar, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna go over a process called Z-leveling. Um, you only have to do this every now and then when you get failed prints or you change out the resin vat. Um, so I'm gonna cut now and go to the computer and show you a little bit about the software we use and how to Z-level your printer. 
Okay, we are back uh, on the computer, and I wanted to show you two softwares you use um, with the frozen printers. Uh, one is the internal software. Um, if you want to know the actual name, it's called Nano DLP. It's just basically the print preview in Microsoft Word. Uh, so in, a, in essence, it connects your computer um, to the printer as if you were connecting uh, to a wireless printer in your house. Um, it also shows what resins are available and what model you wish to load up. Um, so we'll go ahead and pull it up. The way that you access it is actually through the internet. So if you use uh, Google Chrome, that seems to be the preferred one. Now you can't see it, but I'll show you later on on the printer is an IP address. So all you do is type it in. In this case, it's 192.168.0.14. Uh, so I'm almost there. I'm just gonna come up here and change this to 0 0.14. And once you hit it, it comes up. Um, one thing that's really cool, and you can't see it now because we haven't started our print, this is actually a camera um, that takes pictures of your computer working. So if you are working remotely and you see that you're getting a failed print, you can stop it. Uh, up on the uh, top, we have plates, Z-axis calibration, which is what we're going to be using, resin profiles, and some basic printer settings. If we click on resin profiles, um, you know, Edgar, you're getting kind of lucky here. I've gone ahead and done all the profiles for all the different resins. Um, I had my buddy Jim Spencer, who's a DLP printer expert um, and uh, teaches over in uh, Indianapolis. Um, he went through and actually calibrated all these resins. So we have a whole bunch of different resins right here. Um, I'm going to go over printing a, denser, a denture. So we're going to use next dent crown and bridge uh, micro filled hybrid. We also have the regular crown and bridge resin. But first, let's go over and learn how to Z cal or calibrate the Z axis. So if you click on Z axis calibration and go over here to start floor calibration, it's going to tell you unlock the four screws on the build platform. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of break away and do this really quick so we can go through the steps. Okay, Edgar, we are back at the frozen printer and I'm gonna go over um, how you Z calibrate. So the first step is to unlock these little bolts that hold the build plate together and make it kind of loose. So we're gonna turn over here to the printer and you just take an Allen wrench and uh, any old one will do that fits and just unscrew these side screws. You see that's now all kind of loose. And so I'm just gonna pop back over to my computer and I'm not gonna go through the actual steps, you just hit enter. So let me just hit enter really quick. So you can see now that the build plate is descending. Like, why do we do Z-axis calibration? Well, if you think about it, this printer, um, unlike other printers, can print at a 47 micron XY resolution. Um, as a result, we can print in 50 micron layers or even less if you want to. Um, if you were doing an aligner model or a surgical guide or a denture, um, it wouldn't be a big deal to do this. But in this case here, we do want to print at small layers. If the build plate is slightly off, then your layers aren't going to adhere and you're going to have a failure. So let's turn back over to the printer. And we're just going to hold down the build plate. Let me actually do that a little bit better. Okay, let's go ahead and go over how we actually load up a print, generate the supports, and get it to the frozen printer. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this. And there is a great free program um, called Chi2 Slicer. 
And Chi2 Slicer is a free software. Um, if you have an AnyCubic Photon, um, you can see that this is actually the same thing as the AnyCubic Photon. Um, it's the same software. So what it's going to just do for us is um, take our denture and generate the supports on our denture. So I'm going to go ahead and import a denture file. You can click on this little folder and we can go ahead and go to our desktop and find this denture. Where's whatever, let's go fix denture here. So this was a denture that was a radiographic guide that was duplicated. You can see here that it's not quite fitting on the build plate. Um, one thing that's important is if you go under con configure, or let's see, where is it? Edit, copy, configure. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe it's this one over here. Yeah, right here. Do you see here where it says X size and Y size and Z size? Um, these are the dimensions you need to enter for the frozen printer. Now the frozen's X uh, value, or basically this distance from here to here on the build plate, is 68.4. Its Y is about 120.96. So just go ahead and enter those in. You can see here, though, that my uh, denture is not fitting. Now, there's two important parts of a denture. There's the biting surface and the intaglio, right? So we want to make sure we minimize the number of supports that are in these areas. So first things first, it's not going to work in this dimension anyway. So we're going to rotate it. So I'm just going to go over here to rotate. And under the Z value, I'm just going to put in... 90 or 89, whatever. And so now my denture is fitting a lot nicer. But I want it to be at an angle. So I want it to print at an angle so that there's minimal supports, even vertically if I could. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to rotate. And now we're going to rotate it in the Z axis. So let's go ahead and just put in 90. And here we are. We can print that way, which I like to print just because you'll need less supports. So we're going to go ahead and generate the supports next. So if you come over here to this little gizmo, um, click, you always have to click on your model. This is the support generation. And so there's different levels of support. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and auto support that. And so now we have a support network where our teeth are really not that affected, um, nor is the intaglio um, of our object. So we're going to go ahead and then export this as an STL file. So I'm going to go ahead and save as mesh file STL, and we're going to call it Edgar Denture. Okay, we are back uh, on the computer, and I wanted to show you two softwares you use um, with the frozen printers. Uh, one is the internal software. Um, if you want to know the actual name, it's called... Okay, we are back to the frozen software. And again, if you hadn't uh, seen it before, the way we access that is to look on the printer itself and it has a number. In this case, it's 192.168.0.14. And this is going to pull up the Nano DLP software. So we're going to be setting up a plate. So when you click on plate, um, you get this sort of weirdness here. Um, just go ahead and add and then we got our file. I think we called it Edgar Denture. So let's see where that is. Edgar Denture right here. We're going to hit open. It's going to ask you to name the plate. This is just for your benefit. So we'll call it Edgar. And it's going to ask you the profile. Now, if you're not familiar with printer profiles are, there are little software programs that tell the printer what type of resin you're using, how long to cure it, at what intensity to cure it, and how quickly to move the build plate up and down. Remember, 3D printing is a battle between the bottom of the resin vat and the build plate that goes on top. So we're going to print this all in Nextent 
microfield hybrid. Um, if you guys are wondering um, about the Frozen Shuffle and the Frozen XL, um, I developed these uh, with my buddy Jim Spencer um, for the Frozen Make. Now, some say the Frozen Make and the Frozen Shuffle are the same printer, just a different um, sort of display on the front. Um, I've had a few failures using these profiles outside of the Frozen Make. So using these profiles with the Frozen Shuffle. Um, so uh, Jim, I just sent Jim uh, my Frozen Shuffle. He's gonna work on them. So we should have all the profiles available at Digital Enamel. Um, over here is going to ask, do you want to center your pieces? We're going to say yes. And then we're going to hit submit. So when you hit submit, it is now wirelessly sending that file to the printer, um, and which is actually pretty darn cool because um, you don't need a printer attached to it. Um, you can actually access your printer now from any printer in your network. So over here, we can see here that it says Edgar. It has Nextent. Microfilled hybrid. Um, in this case, it is printing in 50 micron layers, and it's going to take us um, 180 seconds. So um, whatever that is in math, I don't feel like doing that. But what I always like to do is check the layers. So if you click on layers, it's going to uh, bring this up, and this is the lattice work of supports and base that we have. As long as you're centered in the middle of the build plate, you're cool. Um, so we can go back to plates and go ahead and hit print from start. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit pause um, and I wanna show you um, what happens on the printer. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and take my phone off the, uh, the little base so it might be a little shaky, but I just want you to see what goes on when we actually print. Okay, so we're back. Sorry, it's all dark and spooky here. Uh, but I wanted to turn down the lights so we can take a look at what goes on when we actually hit print. Um, so I'm gonna pop over to my computer and I'm gonna take the phone off and I'm gonna show you on the actual printer what's going on. So if we come over here, you can see that the build plate is starting to lower. And this was connected and I'm just going to take it off and I'm going to grab the camera and just sort of show you what's going on with the printer right now. So right now the build plate, if it, we had a build plate, that build plate would lower. I just want to show you inside the resin vat. So let me just kind of get this out of selfie mode here. No, well, guess I can't. So this is the resin vat, and you'll start to see a little pattern that's going to be flashed on top. Do you see that? And so that's, uh, if you ever have a problem with your printer, that sort of tells you if the light is actually working. Now you may also notice this flashing that is on for a long time, and that's your bottom layer. Your first few bottom layers will be like that. Okay, so I'm back. Um, so this is going to go on for a while. Obviously, there's no resin in there, but you're going to want to fill it sort of halfway with resin. So Edgar, hope you enjoy the printer. Um, give me a call anytime if you need some help. And for those that wanted to know about how frozen printers work, this applies to both the Shuffle and the Shuffle XL. So thank you, and uh, we'll see you later.